Hey guys, it's Sonia. I have been getting some questions on my Facebook page and uh, other places about how I'm um, using the spire graph. I have been doodling and doing circle kind of things for a long time, but um, about, I guess it's about a year and a half ago, a friend of mine found this vintage, uh, I think it's 1967, spire graph for me on eBay. At that time, you really couldn't find them in the stores. Now they're making them all over the place. Um, again, but this is my old vintage one, and so I thought I would just kind of show you guys how I'm using it. I see people getting really frustrated with it, and, and I was very frustrated at first myself, um, and there were no YouTube videos. I think I found one YouTube video, very short YouTube video, about how to do it, and it helped me a ton, but other than that, um, when I started doing this, there was just nothing, so I experimented a lot it was a lot of learning from my own errors and um, I think I've gotten pretty good at it I'm certainly not an expert but um, let me just show you real quick some of the things that I've done um, with the spire graph uh, this is one of my pieces just playing with it and layering different designs and then coloring those in a little bit or coloring around them um, here's one that I did in one of my art journals but on top of a background. Um, this is just with the circle tool and then I did some spire graphs on top of that layered one with different pins and then colored those in. Here's one that I did with different spire graph designs. <clears throat> just colored those in. They, they leave you awesome space for doodling inside of the designs. That's one of the things that I just love about it. So, yeah. So, I thought I would just show you right quick kind of how I do it. Um, and hopefully that will help somebody else. This, this is the original one. This is the instructions um, that came with it. Which, in Shannon Green's uh, latest post on her blog mundane entertainment she pointed out that the instructions are a little hard to understand and they really were i really had to sit down and reread them experiment until i figure out exactly what they were talking about and i really had to practice a lot and i practiced making all of these different designs um and you know learning along the way I am still not good doing these designs, which are done using the outside of the wheel. You know, but the, it's just a matter of practicing. So this is the original kit. I don't keep my wheels in here. I keep them in a box. Um, but my kit came with the original little pins, um, P-I-N-S, and the original pins, P-E-N-S, which I don't like and I don't use anymore. The ones that came with this set were... Um, goopy you know they got goopy and left ink boogers which i cannot stand um so yeah i'm going to take these out i gotta actually now that i realize it go get my wheels from the other room and i will be right back okay i've got my wheels and i'm going to zoom in a little bit okay so what i did when i was first learning is I went through and I wrote numbers in paint pen on top of all of my wheels because the numbers that correspond to the instructions and the pattern um, guides use the wheel numbers. Um, so each wheel has a number and let's see if I can show you on here. It's very tiny. You're not going to be able to see it on this film, but it's right there above this little dot. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you that, but it's, it's, you know, it's etched in or whatever, raised up on top of the wheel. Um, it says 84. And my kit came with two wheels. One is a 144, which I have written on here in paint pen. 
and one is a one, the other one is 150. That corresponds to the number of teeth inside the wheel. It is inevitable, and I'm so upset right now, but over these last two weeks, I have finally managed to lose one of my wheels. And I am heartbroken, but hopefully I can replace it um, online. i got to figure out which one I'm missing. So anyway, um, that's what I did when I was starting to practice doing these. Uh, so that I could look at the guides. I made myself some guides so that I could... Um, learn these patterns and so when I first started I wanted to use the pins well I needed to use the pins p-i-n-s and so I just got a piece of foam core and you can use any pretty much any paper this is just um, a little bit of paper that I got out of um, an art journal and so I would Pin my wheels down. Um, now, on these wheels, there are two kinds of holes. Two kinds of holes. One is where you put your writing utensil, and the, there's tiny little holes, four on each wheel, that hold your wheel in place. And um, at first, it's kind of a pain to figure out which is which, but you'll get there. They're uh, right across from each other. See, I just did it wrong, too. No, that's right. Can you see what I'm... Yeah, you can see. Okay. So, here's... Okay. They're always, you know, exactly spaced apart. So, that kind of helps you find them sometimes. Um, here's another little tip that I learned. When you are working with your wheels, your inside wheels and your outside wheels, it you want to make sure you can feel on here the little lines and numbers are raised on the top okay both sides I find it easier to do it when I have the raised part up sometimes if I have the raised part down the smooth side up it tends to skip more um, that's just my own experience so raised part up both sides and there's my wheel. Now, I'll tell you this. It is harder to do the big wheels and, well, the little wheels too, um, with the furthest items out, the fur furthest holes out. The easiest holes to work with are the ones that just kind of rotate around in, in the center. Um, okay, so, oh, let me back up just a second and talk about pins. Okay, pins. I have experimented with many a pin. Um, this is my pin bag. Yeah, I'm a little obsessed with finding pins. You can use a whole lot of different pins. My personal preference is um, the Pilot G2s. I like the sevens and I like the fives. Well, you can use any of the any of the sizes actually. Um, but these to me are good. They don't skip and they don't leave ink boogers. I hate ink boogers and they don't smear. Um, and now that has to do some with the paper that you're using. But I find these on almost every kind of paper that I've tried do not smear. So this is pretty much what I use all the time. Um, these Sarasa, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Sarasa, the Zebra brand, they work. Um, Uniball Signos, oh, it's kind of dark. I don't know if you can see that, but the Uniball Signos were great. Um, now, I had some some of the Stadler Tri Plus, the ballpoint kind. They worked fine, except that when I fly, um, the balls pop out of those, and so I don't buy those anymore. Um, but that's just my own experience. You may have a different experience. Now, I've been seeing lately on different people's blogs that they are using felt tip pins. I was scared to use felt tip pins because I don't want to break my tips. 
Um, so I hadn't even tried Sharpies or um, these, um, what are these called? The Stabilo. But I just recently bought some, some of these Stabilos. They work fine. I'll show you these. Um, and just a plain old Sharpie uh, works great too. Either just the regular kind or the Sharpie pens. Um, so I'll show you these. But th these are all of the ones that I use 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay, back to the basics. Now, this is a spiral graph pinned down on a page, and I'm just, I'm not going to pay attention to the, to the lines on the wheel yet. I'm just going to show you how I do it. Now, this is not my favorite, because as you can see, the wheel moves around just a little bit, and that's okay. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal, um, but... Um, it, I personally like to hold it more steady. Now, see how that kicked up? When I push down here, it kicks up over here. You still, in, to me, have to hold it down some. Or you're going to get that kick up. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having the pins in place, right? So, what I, so I practiced like this for a long time. And I actually just found it harder to use the pins. So, I quit using the pens. Plus, I didn't like having holes in my paper when I really started getting into doing more complicated designs. So, I just hold my wheel down pretty solidly. I hold my wheel down uh, with my fingers, and then I just do my thing. Okay, now, here's a tip that I learned from experience and it's the first thing that I see people do when they are spirographing with me. And that is they push down way too hard on the pen. They really try to make that wheel go around. And you, you do have to kind of guide the pen around. But when you are really pressing down like this, especially if you're on a, like a kind of a slicker surface, you're going to get those skips and bumps. And it's going to skip teeth. So, you, you just want kind of a light touch. You don't have to press down very hard. You just want to guide the wheel around the outside uh, circle, or inside circle, rather. Now, see, because I wasn't paying attention, it skipped. It happens. It's going to happen. Um, but anyway, so yeah, inside holes are the easiest to practice with. Um, and you don't have to press down that hard. All right. Oh, I did that off camera. I'm learning. I'm learning, people. So, yeah. I, okay, I skipped again. That is because I'm standing up at a weird angle trying to do this and look in the camera at the same time. I'm learning too much stuff at one time. Okay, that is the bare bones basics. So, I'll come back with a little more uh, advanced spirograph techniques. Okay. First advanced technique, I guess it's not really advanced technique, it's actually what the instructions tell you to do, but as a kid when I was doing this, I never realized that this was the way I was supposed to be doing it. Um, I have learned this, you know, just figuring out, trying to figure out what the lines are for. Okay, I'm not going to try to explain the math behind all this. I don't understand it. Whatever. It's math. Um, it's a miracle as far as I'm concerned. What you need to know is, if you will start whatever pattern you want to do, and I don't ever know what patterns are going to come out in advance. I did all the guides. I've got the guides, whatever. I don't really care that much. I just like to play with them and see what I get. But if you will line up your these lines with the lines on your wheel, the pattern is going to line up better. So let me show you that a little bit. Let me. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you this line situation. Now, it doesn't matter for what I'm doing. It doesn't matter which of the lines on the outside wheel I use. I just want to use the same one for each hole I use on the big wheel, on the inside wheel. And so, um, each of the holes has a line. I'm just going to line up this one right here. This is number 19. It doesn't really matter. 
um, and I'm going to do one rotation. Okay, so this is an easy one. It has three uh, end points. Now, if I go to any other point, any other hole on this wheel, and line up its line with this line, I'm going to get the same end points. They're going to line up. Does that make sense? Let me show you one where I do it and I don't line it up. So let's say I do the same thing, this one with that first pattern. Now let's just say I pick a different wheel and I don't move my circle to the to the same line if I just do it over here. Okay, see, I get that same pattern, but my endpoints don't line up. So to get those really cool effects, you've got to do your make your patterns line up. So here's one. Here's another one. And again, I'm just doing this randomly. Um, it doesn't really matter. It matters if you want a very specific pattern, but I, like I said, I just like to play. All right, see? So now I have a much more layered and constructed kind of design. Now I could go in here with the same one um, and a different wheel and a different color. And I'm going to get a cool effect that way. And I can start layering up my design like this if I want to. All right. All right, so that's kind of how to use the lines. Now, of course, every wheel is different. Every wheel is going to give you um, a different design. All right, let me show you this little trick. This is the 52 wheel, and I'm going to line it up. And I'm going to pay attention to which hole I'm using. And as you can see, sometimes I write on mine um, with a Sharpie or something so that I can make sure I repeat the same hole. So I'm going to start this pattern. And about there, I'm going to change colors. I'm not going to move my wheel. I'm just going to start in that same hole. How cool is that? Just makes me happy. Start about right there. And I'm going to change colors again. Yeah, it's a little bit close to the same color, but you get the idea. And I don't have to finish a whole pattern if I don't want to. I think that looks pretty doggone cool just the way it is. So I would probably use that in something. Let me hold that up so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right, so that's one thing you can do. Now, the way I layer my patterns is just manually. Um, if I want to have another one behind this one, I just start in on it and I just lift my pin up um, and don't draw that part. Takes a little more patience, a little tedious depending on the pattern. But yeah, there you have it. So now it looks like I have one behind the other one. And I would just keep layering uh, these different patterns on here. In however way I want to do it. There, like that. Easy cheesy. So that's a whole lot of fun. So yeah, get your spirograph out and um, give it a try if you have one. And be patient with yourself. Let yourself play. Let yourself um, mess up and learn a lot. Play with different pins. Play with different wheels and patterns. And um, 
yeah, let me know what you come up with on uh, your own with your spirograph. Thanks.